Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about Cox postulates. In this video you will get to learn the postulates, their usefulness and limitation, the steps in proving Cox postulates in relation to plant pathology and molecular Cox postulates. The Cox postulates are sometimes called Henle Cox postulates. These postulates are basically a set of rules, conditions or criteria to prove experimentally the pathogenicity of an organism. Principally, these postulates are used to confirm the role of microbes in diseases and other processes. These postulates were given in the later part of 19th century and more than 130 years ago from now. That was the time when the role of microbes in causation of disease in human or plant started being proved. Spontaneous generation ideas were still doing the rounds. Robert Koch, a German physician, discovered a number of bacterial organisms causing anthrax, tuberculosis, and cholera. And in the process of his discovery, he emphasized on the need of the postulates. He gave first direct demonstration on role of bacteria as cause of disease. He also had many pioneering works in his credit like introduction of pure culture technique using solid media, etc. He is called as the father of bacteriological techniques. Now let us see its usefulness using a real life situation in plant pathology. Suppose there is an unknown disease in a plant and we get to know about this through its symptom. Now say a microbe X is isolated from the infected plant. Now can we say that X, the isolated microbe, is the pathogen of the disease? One can easily assume that X is the pathogen of the disease in the plant. But how to make sure that the isolated microbe X is the pathogen of the disease? We have to prove Cox postulates and establish the fact scientifically. Though Robert Koch worked with human and or animal system, the postulates given by him were equally applied in plant pathology. So now we know why we need Cox postulates. The basic purpose of Cox postulates, to put it in simple words, these postulates are used to identify the cause of a disease. All the plant diseases that we know today, most of them have passed through the conditions, rules or criteria set by Robert Koch. For any unknown etiology of a disease, Cox postulates must be followed to establish the cause of the disease unequivocally amongst the scientific community. Originally, there were three conditions that were given by Robert Koch and these were the parasite occurs in every case of the disease in question and under circumstances which can account for the pathological changes and clinical course of the disease. The second, the parasite occurs in no other disease as a fortuitous and non-pathogenic parasite. Third, after being fully isolated from the body and repeatedly grown in pure culture, the parasite can induce the disease anew. And today we read them as the microorganism must be found in abundance in all organisms 
suffering from the disease but should not be found in healthy organisms the microorganism must be isolated from a diseased organism and grown in pure culture the microorganism from the pure culture should cause disease when inoculated into a healthy organism the microorganism must be reisolated from the inoculated diseased experimental host and identified as being identical to the original specific causative agent so here we get one extra condition in number 4 this extension of cox postulates by adding the fourth postulate was done by an eminent plant bacteriologist e f smith in 1905 so the simple and short version of cox postulates can be read as universal presence of the microbes one or more isolation of the microbe in pure or mixed culture third use the isolate to recreate the process number 4 observe and reisolate the microbe now in history we get to know about some more postulates given by a few more researchers during that time edwin klebs gave some procedures in 1882 which were similar to the ones given by robert koch and his procedures were careful microscopic study of diseased organ isolation and culture of the germ associated with the disease production of the same disease by inoculation of this cultured germ into healthy animals now these procedures were given by edwin klebs to identify and confirm the cause of a disease we also get to see lofler's postulates given in the year 1883 and this can be read as the organism must be shown to be constantly present in characteristic form and arrangement in the diseased tissue second these organisms which from their behavior appear to be responsible for the disease must be isolated and cultured in purity third the pure cultures must be shown to induce disease experimentally now one can easily question whether the postulates given by robert koch were his own because robert koch published his postulates in the year 1890 however he followed the postulates that were originally in his mind and he proved the causative nature of many diseases as we discussed earlier now how to prove cox postulates in plant pathology let us see here with an example let us start with a disease in a plant so according to the cox postulates the first condition is a microbe is associated with the disease and the second condition in cox postulate is the suspected microbe can be isolated in pure form in laboratory and let us say that we have isolated a microbe from the plant which is supposed to be diseased the third postulate says on inoculation to heal the host the same disease will be produced so we choose a healthy host of same kind and we inoculate the isolated microbe to the plant and we get the same disease so third condition is fulfilled and the fourth condition which was given by e f smith it says from the inoculated plant the same microbe is isolated again so we get the same microbe isolated again so 
here we prove that the first isolated microbe in petri dish the first isolated microbe in petri dish is really the causal organism of the disease in question so here we see all the conditions fulfilled now we may also have a case where a disease is seen in a plant and we go ahead with proving cox postulates and in the second condition we get a microbe isolated from the disease plant in question and we inoculate the microbe to a healthy host and on inoculation to the healthy host the host does not produce the same disease so this is a deviation from the third condition so we get a different disease here as you see the symptoms are different from the one where we got the microbe isolated from so from these artificially inoculated plant we do not get the same pathogen again so this second isolated pathogen or the microbe differs in characteristics from the first isolated microbe so here we are unable to prove cox postulates there may be many factors which caused this deviation we may need to uh, repeat the experiment now where the cox postulates work well as we have seen uh, the second condition of the cox postulates require isolation of microbe in pure culture in the lab so only those microbes bacteria or fungi which are not obligate parasites which are necrotrophic or saprophytes that can grow easily in the lab so for those pathogens which are saprophytic or necrotrophic the cox postulates can be proved well it is not only proving etiological nature of a disease or causative agent of a disease but cox postulates can equally been used in biogeochemistry and industrial microbiology or in the processes wherever microbes are involved cox postulates can be applied can we apply cox postulates everywhere the simple answer to this question is no because robert koch himself dismissed the universal requirement of the first postulate soon after he gave the postulates he realized that all the conditions may not be fulfilled in all the cases he himself dismissed the universal requirement of the first postulate because he found that some carriers of disease which were asymptomatic so in case of asymptomatic carriers of a disease pathogen is present in the host but there is no symptom of the disease so first condition is not fulfilled here and also the obligate pathogens or biotrophs that cannot live or grow without a living host the second postulate cannot be fulfilled in case of plant pathology we know there are many obligate parasites like rust smart powdery mildew tarnay mildew etc and of course viruses so for viruses which are obligate pathogens which cannot be grown in the lab with which second postulate cannot be fulfilled cox postulates have been modified for viruses so here we get five conditions number 1 isolation from diseased host cultivation of virus in experimental host purification and inoculation of purified virus production of comparable disease symptoms in the artificially inoculated host reisolation of the same virus and 
we all know that we have entered a molecular era where cultivation of microbe in laboratory solid media is not required for identification. Identification can be carried out using various molecular tools through DNA or RNA based protocols. And also the virulence and pathogenicity can be attributed to microbial genes. So keeping the recent developments in mind, Stanley formulated molecular Cox postulates in the year 1988. These postulates are read as the phenotype or property under investigation should be associated with pathogenic members of a genus or pathogenic strains of a species. Specific inactivation of the gene or genes associated with the suspected virulence trait should lead to a measurable loss in pathogenicity or virulence. Third, reversion or allelic replacement of the mutated gene should lead to restoration of pathogenicity. So with this, the presentation ends here. For further studies, you may please consult these references. Thank you very much.